All right, so we're bowling off this Wednesday edition of the Sports Smack Zone with cricket. It was not a fairy tale start for West Indies on day one of the first test against England at Lords on Wednesday, with a dismal showing with the bat giving control to the home side at Stumps. Well, got Gus Atkinson, his first test, ran through the Windies batting order with 7 for 45 to help bundle out the Caribbean men for 121 just before tea. James Anderson playing in his final test took 1 for 26 in the first innings. No West Indies batsman lifted their bat with history-making debutant Mikhail Louis, top scoring with 27 and Kavem Hodge adding 24. Zach Crawley has so far led England's reply with 76, while Ollie Pope contributed 57 as England ended the day on 189 for 3, a lead of 68 runs. Jaden Seal so far has two for 31. Well, joining us this afternoon, Fazir Mohammed. He was on radio commentary with the BBC and he joins us to review the day. Good afternoon, Faz. How are you doing? Uh, not too bad. I think uh, right now the, the English fans, after celebrating a good day's cricket, they, I think they, they, they can't recover because, uh, of course, uh, as everyone would be aware, they've just reached the final uh, of the Euros. So <laughs> it's double celebrations tonight in, in, in London, especially. Yeah, a lot of celebrations all around. And, you know, I did my introduction fast, but I'd love for you to sum up today's play. In your words and in your BBC commentary style, what did you make of today's play? Well, the, the fact is that, you know, when you put it in contact with the performance that uh, the West Indies put up in Australia, you were, you were looking for a continuation of that in the sense that you wouldn't necessarily expect miracles but you want to see the fight. And I think that was the disappointing element of today's play. Not so much that the West Indies were routed for 121, but the manner in which they got out. After a decent opening partnership of 34, weathering the, the storm of, of very overcast conditions, Jimmy Anderson and, and the, the other bowlers, to then to be 88 for three in early afternoon with a pair of Kavim Hodge and Alec Athanas lo looking pretty comfortable and then to lose four wickets for no runs, to be all out for 121. And then in the bowling side of things, uh, they granted that they, they, they didn't leak runs as we've seen other teams leak runs in England to England over the last couple of years, well, less than five runs per over, given the way they've been scoring. But it was the lack of discipline in the bowling, the, the inability of bowlers to maintain a consistent line and length which was particularly disappointing. So I think with the, the feeling that the bowlers were the ones who were the strongest suit for the West Indies coming into this test match, it was particularly disappointing the way the day ended. Yeah, really, really disappointing. And I have to agree with you there, Faz, because <coughs> I think, and I said this at the opening of the show, the top of the show, you know, for me, I didn't expect West Indies to go there. I'm starting to become a realist like Lance and not wear my hat on my sleeve anymore. I think it's the amount of battering that I would have gotten game after game um, from the West Indies. So for me, I didn't expect a win, if I'm being very honest. Asked me if I wanted a win. Yes, I was hoping, finding some sort of hope in me. But I understood that, you know, against an England team like this, you really had to put effort and leadership. Did you see any sort of leadership on the field today? To a certain extent, yes. But I, I didn't see it as far as the discipline of the bowlers. No, no, that, that is the concern. I mean, your, your captain can set your field, do the right things. But if your bowlers don't maintain that consistent line, then what else can you do other than change your, your bowlers? And, and uh, Alzari Joseph was particularly expensive. He went for almost seven runs per over. Th that was disappointing. Uh, so uh, essentially, uh, if you want to talk about one thing in relation to tactics, this, this idea of bringing on a spinner just before the end of a session or just before the end of a day's play. I mean, to get, get a good occasion, Moti, a couple of overs before the end of the day is was almost like saying, look, I've run out of ideas with, with my other bowlers who I really rely on. Here, take two overs. Let, let, let's see what can happen. We'll have to wait and see if there's going to be any change of tact and tactics and discipline from the West Indies bowlers tomorrow because with Joe Root and Harry Brook looking to get well set on what could be a decent day for batting, the West Indies could be played out of this match completely by the end of the second day if they're not careful.
Yeah, and that's something as well that, you know, we've spoken about for some time, you know, not really utilizing the days that you have, not um, protecting your wicket when necessary. And then, of course, today we see a perfect example of that. Um, just batting for about 40-something overs and we're all out and we're back out there bowling. Very, very disappointing. But one of the storylines coming out of today, and we spoke about it in our introduction, Faz, that youngster taking the opportunity, Goss Atkinson, really, really good to watch, exciting. Um, it would have been better if it was coming from the West Indies side, but nevertheless, you know, quality is quality. And it comes at a time where James Anderson is making his exit. What did you make of the youngster? It's sort of one of those days when everything goes your way. As many more expert commentators were observing, there'll be other days when he'll bowl even better and get no wickets at all. This time around, his first wicket, with just his second ball in Test cricket, was a wide delivery of no particular merit that Craig Bradford dragged on to the stumps. And then from that point on, everything seemed to go for him. What he has for him is pace in the high 80s, close to 90 miles per hour, and that hustles a batsman. But having said that, the West Indies really played into not just his hands, but England's hands with some of the, the loose stroke play. But credit to him, your first day of Test cricket, you take 7 for 45. It's the best by an England bowler in a first innings on debut. And the, that's really outstanding. He missed out on getting 8, which no England bowler has ever taken on debut. So he missed out on, the, on that opportunity. Uh, also, we can't overlook Chris Wokes, who picked up a couple of wickets to reach 150. Uh, so so overall, it was the, the sort of day where, yes, the, the young man shunned. Jimmy Anderson just got the one wicket at the start of his farewell test match. But overall, things went for him, and you really capitalize on moments like that in any sport, whatever it is. When you feel the luck is with you, you go for it, and he did. He got three wickets in one over, missed out on a hat trick, got three wickets in four balls. Everything seemed to be working for him, and every mistake that the West Indies made, they seemed to pay a very heavy price. Yeah, Faz, in analyzing the prospects of the West Indies in this series, a lot was made of the inexperience of a lot of the batters in, in English conditions and uh, I was encouraged today by the fact that the least experienced uh, on debut with the Ketishan 23 year old Mikhail Louis top scored talk to us about his approach today and um, any compliments if any that you would you would direct in in his his way well, he certainly looked at uh, the way he shaped up as if he wasn't overawed by the situation at all. He put a broad defensive bat, he pushed forward confidently, he looked to be well organized. Uh, and indeed, in those opening exchanges, getting a couple of boundaries and, and then the six over backward square leg, he, he looked confident. And, and therefore, the, the, the feeling at, at the time was, look, you know, the West Indies, with a bit of luck, a bit of playing and missing, which you expect on the opening day of any test match anywhere in the world, and certainly in England, on a great day at Lords, you're going to have to rely on a bit of luck to survive. I, I thought he played very, very well. But, but again, it's about appreciating that in test match cricket, surviving an hour, surviving an hour and a half may not be good enough if you've got a very fragile batting lineup and that was exposed. But to your specific question, I, I think it, you can see the fundamentals there in Mikhail Louis if he really continues to work on his game. And that's the important point, Lance. It's not about being satisfied that you top scored. It's like Al Alec Athanas top scoring in both innings of his debut test match and the West Indies losing by an innings inside three days to India in Dominica a year ago. You've got to put all of these things in perspective. That 27 isn't a, a, a terrible start, but it doesn't set the world alight. It shows that there is some promise, and it's up to Mikhail Louis to take it forward. Yeah. I find that the risk of sounding selfish, when I played cricket in my youth, I was a, a top-order batsman, and I must admit that that was one of the things that I didn't like about cricket. You bat early, you, you didn't bat well, and batters after you came on and made the bowling look easy and you feel as if you, you missed out. And I, I just say that to say this because there are batsmen for the West Indies far more experienced than Mikhail Louis and um, just didn't do as well. Single digit scores and uh, credit to the man on debut for putting his head down and making an effort. But how, how the, the other batsmen who had the responsibility to try to build the West Indies innings. Is, is there more disappointment 
in directed at them given the fact that you saw in this completely inexperienced player an effort that allowed him to top score I'm actually surprised that given your karaoke obsession, you found time from that to actually play a bit of cricket. So I'm, I'm happy to hear that, Lance. But uh, <laughs> in, indeed, just to, 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 that, to that particular point, you, you're right. You, you would expect the others to come. And granted, it's not the most experienced line. So let's not fool ourselves because the batting that followed uh, both Mikhail Louis and Craig Brathwaite, you're talking about, pl about players in some cases with less than, than, a, than a couple of test matches, two mm. test matches, four test matches, five, six, uh, if, if that many. Then you had Jason Holder getting out first ball, Joshua De Silva getting out second ball, Alzari Joseph after a few boundaries, skying one to mid on. It, it reflected almost a, an unwillingness to appreciate the situation. Some, some say, well, look, you know, it's just one of those days. Well, West Indies have had too many of just one of those days. And therefore, that's why they're in a hole right now. You need to have these players, for example, talking about that, 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 that partnership that, that we saw developing uh, between Athenais and Kavim Hodge, the two Dominicans, who were playing well in the early afternoon. And then Gus Atkinson came back on, angled the delivery across the left-handed Athenais, and he edged low to first slip. Again, fundamentals, because this is obviously what he was looking to do going down the slope with that angle, with the gradient, and that's exactly what happened. Kavim Hodge, he went down on his knees when Oli Pope took that brilliant catch. But Pope wouldn't have had the chance to take that brilliant catch if it wasn't hit in the air in his close enough to his direction. So, so these are, are certain elements that, 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 that reflect not so much that the Wesleys were unlucky. It wasn't a case of being unlucky. It was a case of them not showing the necessary discipline is required in test match batting because it's occupation of the crease. It's frustrating the opposition. It's picking up the runs wherever you can. And yes, it might not be particularly exciting having just come out of a T20 World Cup, for example, but it's a different game. And, and therefore, we saw players who had shown the necessary fight and grit and determination to a certain extent in Australia with that historic success in Brisbane almost be flippant about it and and therefore that's why the West Indies from 88 for three to 121 all out it was hugely disappointing yeah fans we spoke to Reds on Monday and he had expressed concern about the preparation for this test series the administrators of West Indies cricket would have known from last year what the schedule was and I know there was a T20 World Cup that occupied everyone's minds um, in 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 the in recent months but there was always this knowledge that we had a test series to play in England immediately after the World Cup. Of course, there were players involved in the T20 World Cup that were a part of the test red ball squad that, you know, would, would have to focus on the T20 before. But is there anything that could have been done preparation wise to get this team more ready for what was always going to be a very, very difficult series? Reds felt as if more could have been done um, from a preparatory standpoint, um, maybe getting there even earlier to ensure that the players w would be better equipped for this tough series. And I'm glad Red Reds made that point before a ball was bowled because hindsight is always 20-20 vision. And, and yes, if you're talking about relatively inexperienced players or inexperienced players outright coming to play in England with only a three-day match and a three-day match against relatively low-level opposition to get them ready uh, for uh, three tough test matches, well, well, yes, it's, it's, it's going to be a, a difficult challenge. It, it can be argued, well, you know, the West Indies didn't have any huge build-up for those two test matches in Australia, but I, my, my memory serves me right, they had more time in Australia ahead of those two test matches, and, and therefore we, we, we saw the, the, the requisite fight and determination. This time around, you would think that the authorities would recognize, I don't know if it's an issue of budgets, I don't know what, what those elements are, because that has been a point that Johnny Grave has been hammering home over and over again, that when teams visit in international cricket now, they make no money at all, uh, and, the, and therefore there are issues related to that. But from what we understand, West Indies made a surplus 
from the cricket last year. So could some of that surplus have been allocated to the West Indies, playing a couple more warm-up matches? Would it have been worthwhile? Would it have been beneficial? Of course, we're just speculating here. But certainly it makes sense to think that for players who would not be really attuned and familiar with these conditions in England, the more cricket, the more match practice you get, surely would have been beneficial. Yeah, so, so important preparation, Faz. Uh, the approach as we head into day two? Well, it has to be discipline. It has to be bold one side of the wicket, bold to your field, but basically try to keep things tight because too often on this first afternoon, we saw the West Indies maybe getting an early wicket. In fact, we saw opportunities missed. Kevin Hodge missed a run out opportunity early on to get Zach Crawley. He went on to get 76. Mikhail Louis dropped a straightforward chance of Ben Duckett at cover point. Fortunately, it didn't prove very costly. But again, if you're on the back foot already, you need to take every chance that comes your way. So the West Indies, when play gets underway, 6 o'clock East Caribbean time, 5 o'clock Jamaica time tomorrow, they need to be focused on keeping things as tight as possible and play into the minds of the English and force them into attacking shots that could open up opportunities for them. Because if they bowl like they bowl today, it's going to be a long, tiring, frustrating day for the West Indies in the field. Yeah, and we definitely don't want that as West Indies fans. Well, Faz, thank you so much as always. Um, enjoy London and we'll talk again soon. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Take care. All right. Fazir Mohammed there, of course, one of our Sports Max cricket analysts. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back.